The results are in from the biggest independent test of copper and tin bullets in the world. Over 350 deer shot by 15 different deer stalkers from 25 to 250 metres. What worked, what didn't, and did we bust any myths? Plus, by no bingo, we ask our stalkers to guess the price of a new kid on the optic block. High ski are setting their sights on UK hunters. Plus, we'll also hear from Ian Hodge about his foxing package, and James from Ruag talks us through his best-selling rifle. Welcome to Field Tester, where we look deeper so you can choose smarter. Four months ago, we gave a load of stalkers a load of non-lead ammo and told them to go out and do what they do best. Steve Goodwin is one of those hunters. Today, we're joining him and Max, the German wire-haired pointer, for one of the last outings before we bring this experiment to an end. So I make the mistake of not reading the dog. And I, say, you know, I always say to people, I say, How do you do? I say, you've got to trust your dog, you know. The dog's very rare. I, I don't think he's ever been wrong. You might think he is, but you know, those noses, Steve shoots deer for a living. It's management, it's pest control, and he needs to be quick and efficient. We knew he and the others just wouldn't entertain a product that slowed them down and didn't drop deer. So what did we actually ask them to do for us? I talk about my, my guinea pigs, and they are my little guinea pigs. They've been my guinea pigs for the last kind of four months. And so the data I've been asking for is reasonably straightforward. This is a, a straightforward field test. There's no BS, it's a field test with people who actually are doing the job. So what I've asked for is the range or the shot distance, bullet placement, shoulder, chest, head, neck, run on or flight distance. So after they shot the animal, how many meters has, that, has the animal run before it's actually expired? The species of the animal and any comments or observations. So I said, you know, you shot lead from all, all these years. If there's anything different, to the way this, the animal's been shot or any, any, any meat damage or anything internally within that, tell me any differences. And what I've done with that data is I've put it onto a spreadsheet and I've collated over, over four months and that's what I've got in front of me. The stalkers also took pictures of the deer to help document the shots to give us as clear an idea as possible. 20, 30, 10, 0, 0, 20, 30 was a 50 there. 10, 20s, 20s, there's, an, there's 180 there, which is a long one. The data reveals that of the 335 deer listed here, 203 were neck or head shot, and 130 were body shot. The average flight distance is 18.6 metres. So when you were scanning through there, I did see that it said lost. So you lost one. So yes, we had one stalker, an interesting situation. He was shooting roe deer at about 180 metres and he had shot one and that had dropped and the, and the follower was probably about five meters away and he shot that one. And that ran off, he thought nothing of it. And he walked towards it and it sprung on again and sprung on and, and he lost the animal. A day later on, he found the animal. And this is, this is a 90 grain copper bullet. It hit the middle of the shoulder and deflected up through the, the top of the shoulders and out the top of the neck. Would lead have been any different? I've got no idea. He hit the hard shoulder. I'm not too sure. So of all those 300 plus animals, we've actually lost one. Back to the stalk and we get into some fallow, but there's no backstop. As well as arranging to see Steve this morning, Tim's also gathered some of the other guys for some post-match analysis. Rob, Ali and Miles have all been taking deer for the larder. Neck, head and body shots have all been used. But really, it was the body shots we were interested in. This is what Miles had to say before he'd pulled the trigger. Um, if they do the job well, then they do the job well. If they don't, people will hear about it. <laughs> <laughs> Every single animal I have shot with the lead-free rounds from a range of 10 metres to 200 has fallen dead. The meat damage has been minimal uh, with the non-fragmenting bullets. Um, they work. 
and remind me of calibre? 3006. Okay. So and what brands were you using? I was using the Gecko Zeros. Uh, 136 grain and the Barnes 150 grain. Because you showed pretty good accuracy the first time you. Which was the geckos you put down first? It was the geckos, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The geckos by far the more accurate round. I got asked to do this to see if they work. I did say if they don't work, then I'll be handing them back. Um, I've used them all season. I've had to come back for more. <laughs> um, would, yeah. you buy it? would you actually now go and buy it? Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah, I would. So you know, there's, there's nothing else I can say about it. Um, I've shot Munch, Jack, Chonis, Water Deer, Row, Fallow this season. And with lead rounds, you always get them running a little bit if you end engine room them, um, maybe, you know, 20, 30 yards. Most of them have crumbled on the spot. Yes. Ali runs a venison business. She's seeing the market evolving fast, so was looking for a bullet that gave her confidence to move away from lead. I'm sold on the, the, the non-lead. It does it as good as the lead. It's also looking at the meat damage. Um, some of those rounds that the boys are using with the chest shots, the meat damage, some of them have been quite considerable. Um, certainly the ones, the tin rounds, um, and some of the ones that Miles has been using. Um, some of them, there's been less damage. Certainly the Seiko blades that I'm using, the chest shot, um, seem to be less damaged than it would have been if it was lead. Now the ones that I've been using have been the heavier ones. Um, the Seiko blades are 162 and the Hornadays are 165. Now in lead I'm shooting 123. Um, so where people have said oh no you must go faster and lighter for calibre, um, the ones that Tim gave me, it's been the other way around. And they've done the job. So, I, I, I don't know. Whether, whether, it, whether you have to go lighter for calibre, I don't know. But what I've been given have been heavier and they've, they've done the job perfectly. Okay, so pleased to have been part of this? <laughs> yeah, yeah, really pleased actually. Um, it's been a really good experience. I mean, you're not being paid a thousand pounds to sail this, are you? No. <laughs> it's definitely not. <laughs> yeah, it's 2,000. <laughs> When we first spoke to Rob, he was open-minded and saw the experiment as a way of getting a clearer picture of what's on offer. So I had the, the RWS, Silly and Billy, and the LRX Barnes. Okay. And these were in, and that was a, in 270, so I did a bit of a 270 as well. Oh, all right, so yeah, 270 yeah, as well. Yeah. So, come on then, drum roll. Um, what do you do? Um, I personally, think, I thought they were all really good in the scheme of things. Um, I, I personally haven't got anything, any gripes with them. As I said right from the beginning, when I first came on four and a half months ago, it's probably me being a bit selfish and finding finding out a little bit more about the information in regards to the rounds. And with an open mind, knowing that we're probably going to be pushed that way anyway, so you might as well go with it so you're not swimming against the tide. I've had no run-ons, good wound channels on all the animals I've shot. Obviously, as always, we have our preferred round, so out of that, they're, they're, I'll be quite happy moving away from lead two copper in one particular brand um, but again there's all within a couple of clicks of same zero if it come from lead or if it went through to copper for myself. Okay. Um, which, one, which one, just out of interest, which one do you go for? The LRX is, is probably the, the, the best. Um, um, these, um, the RWS I like, are very really powerful, accurate, actually, a little bit, a quite a bit lighter. And, it, and, it, and, and having three the bullet is working no matter how heavy it is. I would have thought I was seeing a few of those people with the 308s or 30 odd sixes um, saying to me, Oh, Tim, you know, this 165 or 170 is, uh, you know, they're p are passing through, the animal's running away, they're not, you know, expanding properly. Um, sorry, guys, but the animals are dropping. The heavier ones seem to be just as effective as a similar lead round. That's really surprising. So, the stuff on the shelf in this country at the moment. Does the job. At the moment, the data suggests that actually what the ammunition companies are producing, because we, we think that perhaps for the UK we should have slightly lighter um, bullets because our, our, our deer are slighter than perhaps the European or the American ones. But I've got munchaks, Chinese water deer, I've got fallow and I've got reds being shot from 20 yards to 270 meters, so quite long distances, and they're on the ground. At the moment, 
no matter what you use, all those rounds we've got out there at the moment, all those 20 different kind of combinations of, of lead-free ammunition, every single one of them is putting the deer on the ground. What more can I say? Finally, let's get back to Steve. So these were I was using the, the barns in the 243. Yep. Um, I did have some Federals as well. Um, and uh, in the 3006, I've been using these, at the minute I'm using these Cellar, Cellia Bellets. Um, I've used those before in uh, 243 in lead ammunition. I thought, you know, I thought that's pretty, pretty good, to be honest, and, and very reasonably priced. But I've been using these uh, Powerhead blades in the 3006, uh, and that's what I should be buying. I've been using these um, Powerhead 2s as well in a 6.5-55, in a little um, single shot rifle I've got. And, and I really like them again. So any strange reactions? We, was everything sort of textbook? Yeah, I mean, getting, you know, getting good blood trails is, is knocking deer down. And that was it, you know, it's not... It's always a bit boring, it's just like... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, yeah, I mean, but it's the truth, isn't it? It's not, <laughs> I'd like to jazz it up a little bit for the camera, but <laughs> I, I'm aiming where I normally aim, they're dropping or running the distance that they normally do and 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 the good thing is I can now sell the venison uh, as non with being your shot with non-toxic which in this day and age you know that's going to be the big push that is where if we want to encourage more people to eat venison year round rather than just for Christmas um, we, we, we've got to, you know we've got to play our part in it and and these people that are eating this venison I'm finding they're very they're very aware of the environment now um, you know us hunters might you know we might not like it, but but they are. They they know, you know, that they're looking at what they want to put in their bodies. So what's your message to your fellow stalkers? <laughs> My fellow stalkers. What's the message? Wave at you can look down the camera. And wave at the same time. <laughs> dig, <laughs> uh, dig deep, you type. <laughs> um, <laughs> no. Uh, well, I think that you know the change is coming, whether we like it or not, and. Go out and try it. What have you got to lose? You know, what have you got to lose? That you're not going to be going to buy 20 bullets, shooting 10, 15 deer, and not not recovering them. That's just not going to happen. Um, and if it does, I'd question really then where they're putting the bullet, or whether the bullet's accurate enough in the rifle. You know, it's. I, 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 I that's it. You know what? I'm not going to. I, I'm pretty simple. I've used them. They work. I'm happy. I'm happy to recommend them. Um, I've actually I got a, a coal team that works with me on, on, on all the ground and we get out and you know I've suggested to them really that I want them to start using copper because if I'm taking those carcasses home I won't be taking them home if they've been using lead bullets you know so um, it's yeah it, it, it really is I don't know I, I don't know what else you can say really with you know with Tim here we've five or six of us is there Tim I don't know and, and more now 14 now on the team and you know there's just not we're not hearing any horror stories at all we aren't are we everything's dropping everything's been recovered thank you to everyone that got involved with this from the stalkers to the distributors and manufacturers and of course for Mr Pillbeam bringing this all together we really hope that it helps you to help us continue to do this sort of stuff please sign up and become a member of the field sports nation now the timing of this is pretty spot on because there was quite a big announcement this week the um, the game dealers association announced that they are committing to source all feathered and fur game including venison and wild boar from lead free supply chains from the 1st of july 2022 so times they are a changing in a moment we'll be back with Tim looking at the more technical aspects of the bullets that we've used but first we're going to hear from James Fowler from Ruag and Ian Hodge about a special foxing package. Today we've got the uh, Bagara B14 HMR. This is our most popular rifle in, in the UK that we sell this particular one is my personal 308 which is getting some use and uh, we're testing each other I think it outshoots me slightly better. The HMR stands for Hunter Match Rifle so it's a versatile rifle that you can use for 
hunting or, or match shooting. So I'll run through a few features of this rifle, starting from the back here. Uh, we've got the stock spacers, which allow you to add or remove these to adjust the length to pull to suit yourself and make yourself comfortable. The adjustable cheek piece, simple function. Uh, you just turn it, lift it up to wherever you want it, and lock it off. Real simple. Uh, QD studs, sling stud in the back there. This particular stock is an ambidextrous stock, um, so you can shoot left or right-handed with it. However, it's available in true left-handed, a true left-handed bolt in a, a number of calibers as well. So moving up from the stock, it's got an integral chassis that runs from the front here right to the back. It's a rock solid stock, real solid stock. Uh, the trigger is a Bagara Performance trigger. It can be adjusted down to 2.8 pounds. Uh, it's got the standard uh, Bagara bolt with a cone bolt face, twin locking lugs on there. Um, real smooth feed. The magazine system is the Accuracy International magazine. So it's compatible with Accuracy International, but we do uh, supply the Bagara magazines. Uh, the barrel's a standard steel barrel, uh, which has been blued, uh, just a matte black finish. And this particular rifle I've got here is my 308. As I say, I use it for match shooting, uh, steel plates, precision rifle and stalking. It's not too heavy, it weighs in at just under 10 pounds. Nice feel to it, robust, and it's a good rifle. Two year warranty comes with this rifle as it does with all our Bagara rifles. And the retail price on this particular product is £1,150. There's two different sorts of people. One that has spent their complete last six months on the internet asking everybody else's opinion about one thing or another and then coming in saying, I want this and I want that. And then you get the other person that comes in and says, I want to get rid of a fox or foxes or we got trouble, the birds are coming and this and that. And they want a basic, complete outfit that they've used our experience to put together and they're, and they're happy with that. With the more budget end rifles, the expense generally comes with the scope. Um, we always hear, oh, I should spend more money on the scope than the rifle, which, yeah, if you can afford to do so, please do. But you don't, you don't always need to. The most expensive one we got today is the Hauer. Hauer's Japanese rifle, been imported into this country now for about 15 years. Turned out to be a winner from day one for us. Really good gun. Budget price, certainly. If you wanted to buy the gun only, they're between 500 and 550 pounds. This one is just under 1200, but that's with everything you see. We've got the Gecko, uh, Gecko scope on the bipod, aim sport moderator, rubberized stock. Not everybody's cup of tea, a lot of people like the traditional wood, but this is certainly practical. Um, holds well in the hand if you're out foxing at night uh, with the um, wet hands, a bit of mud, it doesn't really matter. So it's a good all-round gun and the Hauer for us has, has proved a winner and, and really popular. This is a Winchester XPR, the, the gun package, relatively cheap. This, this one at 949 with a Stalin moderator, which for us at the moment is our best seller and it certainly cuts the noise down. I, I'm really, really impressed with it. Um, the new Nico Sterling um, Metal telescopic sight, 30mm tube. It's, it's unbelievable value for money, really, at 949, including VAT. Farmer, full-time pest controller, claim the VAT back. You know, you've got a very cheap gun there. A second-hand gun has no VAT. So if a second-hand gun is 500 pound, it's 500 pound, and you can't claim the VAT back. So a, uh, a new gun includes the VAT at 20%, as it is at the moment. So the farmer, pest controller, can claim that back. Um, when you do that, it almost, for people that can claim the VAT back, they just as well have a new gun. You may pay £100 more, but then you've got a brand new gun and the warranty that, a full warranty that goes with it. Whether it's three years for the gun, could be a lifetime on the scope, depending on the scope. For a farmer pest controller looking at a gun like this, they just as well buy new as uh, to buy a, a second hand gun would cost them £700, 750 perhaps, but they can get a, a brand new gun for £950, including the VAT take the VAT off and it's nearly second-hand value. 
Thank you, James, and thank you, Ian. Now, we're probably guilty of showcasing the more expensive optics available to us, probably because they've got more marketing spend. However, there's a new company that have contacted us from China called iSki. They have a range of products they want us to test on the show. So to get the ball rolling, we asked Tim and the rest of the stalkers to name that price tag. So if, if you were in the market to buy some binoculars, what two or three or four things would the first things you'll be looking at? Is it all about, is it, is it, is, wait, okay, wait, yeah. yeah, yeah says wait, yeah. says there's yeah. that wait for a start. Yeah. Clarity. Clarity, yeah. Field, um, field of view. Field of view, yeah, yeah. You've got to gather light at the end of the day. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I like that, there's a very big part. Yeah. And what about ergonomics? Do you, do you, I mean, do you like, I mean, you see some people with big binoculars, small ones, some, you know. They need to, you've got to carry the thing, so they need to yeah. be reasonably compact, but you still want something with a bit of weight and it needs to feel nice in the hand. Hmm. Yeah. So what about power? So we got here, we've got eight, tens and twelves, haven't we? Is that right? Yeah, well, tens and twelves. So what would you go for? You know, do you have a, do you have a specific one? Yeah, I always have a ten power or an eight power. Oh, or? I normally have a ten by forty two with all my bins. Okay. Um, I like those ones that Rob's holding though. Yeah. Those are so you're you're a ten by forty two. What about you, Ali? About the same. Although about the I same. like those that uh, are the ten by fifties. Those. Yeah. Twelve by fifties. Those are twelve. So you, you generally will go for the tens as opposed to the eights. The eights yeah. will give you more light gathering. You know, be better yes. twilight no, factor. Definitely. But you would go, go ten. Eight, eight yes, definitely. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. So, Tim, how are you doing your assessment? One of the things I'm doing is I'm checking the optical clarity. So, a classic one here. I've got a, there's a pylon which is about 700 meters away, and I'm just focusing on the very top of it. And what I've noticed uh, with this pair, for instance, is that on the side of the structure, I'm getting some colour, some greens and blues comes to the side of the actual structure. So it's called the Netting? Yes? Yeah, let's go with netting. Well, you know what I mean anyway. So what I'm just doing, and, and on these ones here, for instance, there's a, there's, a kind of, there's a kind of yellows and blues coming through and greens. Um, and that seems to vary quite a bit from the different models I'm, I'm actually looking through. So at the moment, um, this is definitely, whatever it is, it's actually I've just noticed a lot more of it compared to another one. So it's just one thing, I'm just checking the optical quality. What we can do is, is on, a, on a bit of card, you perhaps rate them as the quality and also what you think they're worth price, price wise. Yeah. Yeah? How yeah, much? <laughs> <laughs> you earn too I, much money, I, I wanted to come to my shop. <laughs> we will reveal all in next month's show, but we will be doing some long term tests with some of the iSki products. Right. Tim wanted to wrap up with explaining a few of the technical differences between the different lead alternative rounds we've been using, plus also see whether we've busted some of those myths. What I've got here is all lead free ammunition. And I think in a very simplistic way is actually, I can divide it into probably two groups. This is pure copper or copper compounds anyway. And I've got two down here, which are tin. Okay, so that, that's basically the two differences at the moment. They're very, very different types of bullets. Just the same as actually in lead, you have your ballistic bullets, uh, ballistic tip bullets which kind of explode and fragment, and you have your more solid ones give you more turn penetration. Exactly the same. They explode, they penetrate. Very, very simple. So we've got the Barnes. Okay, well, Barnes, we've got uh, the Vortex, we've got the TTSX, work very, very well. And in the Barnes, I've got the LRX, which is the long range one. It works very, very well, in the, especially in the Creedmoor. It's meant to expand better at longer ranges, but works very, very well. We've got the Barnes TTSX um, across the range. Works brilliantly well as well. You have 308, 306, 270, you name it, we've tried it. Moving on to the Hornaday's, you know, we've got the GMX. You know, I've got GMX in a, in a, a variety of calibers, really. So 243, 308, 270, 65, 55. They absolutely work fine, which is really, really good. And that's, an, that's an, another type of Hollandaise, GMX, different box, but exactly the same bullet. We've got the Lapua Naturalis. We've only tried this in, I think, three or four animals being shot with this, so therefore I can't give you much feedback on it. There are three or four animals been, um, being shot and no problems whatsoever with that. So it's just that we, didn't, we couldn't get off the ammunition particularly quickly anyway. So moving on to the Seiko, um, you've got the old fashioned Seiko Powerhead 2. 
which he uses a barn's head. But that's been very, very popular. I think we've got 70, 80 odd animals being shot with a power head too. But the, the new kid on the block is the new Seiko power head blade. And this one I've got in 308 and 3006. Very, very effective. They, the people who are using this absolutely love the blade and also really good brass as well. So anyway, very effective. Celio and Bello, and this is an interesting one here because a budget round perhaps, but uh, from our experiences, and bearing in mind we're using quite a few calibers here, we've used the, the Celio and Bello XG Blue. Okay, so that's a lovely case, lovely packaging, <laughs> <laughs> and very well priced as well. So, uh, I mean, we've got five or six Creed Moors being used, we've got 3006, I've got 42 animals shot with uh, 3006, 165 grain. Very, very effective, quite honestly. So, yeah, absolutely brilliant. And also we've got the Exergy, which is a kind of a slightly different construction of bullet. And once again, we've got quite a few animals shot with that. So, you know, a wide variety of deer ammunition. If I just move on a touch, and I talked about these two rounds here. So we've got the RWS Evo Green, and we've got the Gecko Zero. Now, they are, both are owned by the same company. Okay, so. Anyway, but they work in a very, very different way. So what happens with, with these, this ammunition, the bullet is designed to basically fragment. It actually explodes as it hits the animal. So the front half of the actual uh, bullet explodes, fragments with the help of this polymer tip. And the back of it, the back of it, that's the back of the bullet, it's harder material. That drives through in the penetration and comes out the other side. So it works in a completely different way. These are solid copper and they stay 95 to 100% with the retain their weight. These do not, okay. So these two rounds here work in a very different way. So therefore, they absolutely poleaxe deer, no problem at all. But what you'll find with these is that you'll have probably more meat damage. Now I've shot quite a few of them and actually my meat damage has been absolutely fine. But I think if you do catch them in a the shoulder or whatever, they, they, the, the way the bullet kind of actually explodes, it makes a hell of a mess. But I've shot them, you know, in the, in the, in the in through the body and the chest cavity, and I've had no problems whatsoever. But they really, really do work very well. So therefore, lead-free, but work in a very, very different way to to the other, the, 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 the kind of more copper composites in some ways. Just moving on one stage further, two four three. Now it's quite a topic at the moment, two four three, um, basically because in Scotland you need to have. The, um, you need a 100 grain bullet, whatever it is, and people will struggle with putting a 100 grain copper bullet through a normal 243 because it won't stabilise. And that's quite an issue at the moment. So hopefully Scotland may change their, their rules and regulations going forward. But I picked these two out. So therefore I've got a Hornaday 243 80 grain GMX and I've got the Barnes here, TTSX 80 grain. And now these are absolutely brilliant rounds. Um, 3,350 odd feet per second. I don't want the old super performances. 3, 4, 2, 5. These are zipping along. Um, and our experience with shooting with, on deer is they absolutely work incredibly well. So you're only using an 80 grain bullet. Okay, some of you may say, actually, is that legal? Um, but if you, look, if you do the ballistics on that, at 3,400 feet per second, you actually are over the, uh, over the, legal, the, the kind of minimum uh, energy. But, these, these bullets on, for instance, fallow deer or roe deer are absolutely devastating. Um, one may argue, and quite rightly so, is I've got some guys say that they're really, really good, but they do cause a bit of meat damage. They're going so fast, they kind of, they're, they're, just, they're, they're a hell of a mess inside. But they will take a deer quite easily. And also, um, my experience, I've shot six or eight uh, foxes with the, um, the 243 grain GMX, and I've had kind of five or six inch exit wounds coming out the other side of them and they've just dropped. So to me, they work incredibly well. Now, with the Barnes TTSX, I've had a mixture of results on this. One of my colleagues on the test, he shot quite a few foxes and his view is actually they seem to work quite well. But our friend Roy Lupton of the Phil Sports TV, he shot, I think about 14, I think, with the 22250 50 grain TTSX Barnes and he's had problems. Just, just quite a few of the foxes run off. A couple of headshots, no problem at all, but qu uh, quite a few of the body shots, which he would, as far as he's concerned, if the bullet hits the body, it will go down. 
but he's had quite a few problems with the, the Barnes TTS X on Foxes. So once again, a mixture of results, different applications, but it's just one of those things. But Steve and my group, he shot quite a few with a 243, Foxes and Deer, but Foxes he had very little problems with whatsoever. So whether it's a slightly different bullet, it's both TTS X, you would think that the triple two fifty being so fast and such a violent bullet that actually it'll pole like anything, but it's just one of those things we've kind of picked up on the test anyway. So what do we learn from this test? It's four months, over 300 animals on the deck, and you know there are several myths out there or views from from those who who are not too sure. And I and I completely get it. You know, you know, do do they pencil? Um, well, none of our animals over 300 have penciled. You know, has that animal just stood still, going, what was that, and just walked away? No, every animal's actually basically died. Um, Expansion, well, these bullets from our previous film, please go and watch our previous film where we tested copper bullets out to, from 100 metres and 250 metres. You know, they do, even at 250 metres, they are expanding to at least d double their size. So they're doing the job. So therefore, expansion is not a problem at all. So, so really, if I was in the pub with a few mates, and they'd say, oh, Tim, you know, is, is that famous kind of, what's the best calibre? You know, what do you think? And I'm going, oh, God, here we go. Is that, if somebody said to me, what's the best ammunition, I would say, they're all pretty good, yeah? I've got, I've got no favourites here whatsoever. Um, from the data from the, these kind of 14 odd um, stalkers, is there, there's been no complaints whatsoever. Um, and so therefore, they all work. They all put the deer on the ground. So, once again, it's exactly the same as with lead ammunition. You have to find the right bullet for the rifle. So therefore they're all slightly different and I've got a classic one here where basically I've got two, two rifles identical and one shot the cream more at about an inch grouping and the other one was eight inches grouping at 100 meters. I mean the best grouping is the Gecko by far. That is just astoundingly good. No matter what you stick it through that will group very very well. You know half inch type of thing. So they all seen a group from that's a half an inch to maybe 1.2 inches uh, at 100 meters. So they're all pretty accurate, quite honestly. And no doubt if you find the right uh, bullet for your rifle, actually you probably, you know, it'll bring it down a wee bit. So there's no difference, there's no change whatsoever to normal lead ammunition. What we've got to do is get this ammunition into the retailers, and so therefore they can give you the choice. And that's what it's all about now. The retailers have got to start stocking up with this. And some of them are now, which is really, really good. And I think if the retailers, if the gun shops can watch this film, you know, all this, avail all this ammunition is available from, from the importers, you know, and I've got it all here. And if I can say to you that there's no bad apples in here whatsoever. They are all performing. All the deer are on the deck and they've performed incredibly well. So therefore, guys, do not be afraid to stock this ammunition. Just get it out there, and I can guarantee you, once you find the right ammunition for your rifle, is you will probably not look back. Thanks for watching. That's it from me. This month, I will spare you the dancing outro.